Hey there, I'm your host Les Sowy, and in today's video I will show you how to create a simple target lock system. So if I go and hit the play button, we can roam around, and if I press the F key, we can lock onto our target, and no matter where I move, it's going to be locked. Now if I press F again, I can look around like I could before. And with that said, let's begin. Open up your project, and let's go into the content drawer. Now over here, you want to create a new input action so we can call our target lock system. So go to actions, input, input action, and let's call this something like IA underscore target lock. So that would be fine for me. Let's save this and then let's go to our IMC. Inside of here, you want to create a new mapping and you just want to look for the target lock and have it on whatever key you like. I'll simply press it on F. So that will be my key. And once you're happy, save and exit. Next, all we have to do is go to our player character, and that's where we will write our code. So for this, I'll be using BP underscore Brady. Inside of our player character, we want to right click and create a custom event, which we can call something like target lock. Now, the next thing we can do is call the input action we also created. So this was called also target locked or target lock. Now on started, we want to call this custom event. So let's do that. And this is called target lock. So whatever we do in here will be carried out there. So let's just give ourselves some space to write some code. And over here, I want to get a branch. And for this branch, I want to check, are we already target locked or are we not? So for this, I will create a variable, which will be a Boolean called is target locked. Now let's get this, plug it into the condition. And if this is true, we'll make it false. And if it is false, we'll make it true. So let's set this actually. Let's copy paste. This is going to be true and this is going to be false. So if we are target locked, we want to disable it. And if we are not target, uh, target locked, we want to enable it. So from the false, let's drag out and get a sphere trace for objects. And the start is going to be the position of our actor. So get actor location, like so, and plug it into start. Now for the end, I want to grab my camera, which is right over here. So let's get this and do get world, uh, get world rotation. And then from here, I want to do get forward vector. Now this value, I want to multiply. And this will basically determine how far or how far or short our target lock can be set on. So let's do a multiply node and right click on the spin, scroll down and find to float double precision. So I found a 600 value to be good. And of course, you can play around with this and determine how far you want this to lock. And the end result, we want to create add. And this actually should be on the bottom and this should be on the top. And this we can plug into the end. For the radius of our sphere trace for objects, um, a value maybe of 200 is going to be just perfect. And then for the object types, let's make an array and select pawn. So select pawn. And if you want to see this in work, uh, just say for duration, but I don't need to see it. That's okay for me. So this is already starting to look good. Out of the return value, let's get a branch. Look that like here. And if we drag out from out hit and look for break, we can break hit result, click the down arrow, and you see hit actor. Let's promote this to a variable. And we can leave the name as it is for the moment. That's good. And you want to connect true into the hit actor. Next, I'll show you a friendly performance way to do it and a more costly way. So let's do the friendly version first. So let's do set timer by event. Like so. For the time, we can right click and do get world delta seconds. Plug that into here and make sure you tick looping. Now for the event, let's drag out, say add event, add custom event. And let's say we call this lock enemy or something on these bases. Now we want to get the hit actor and we want to right click and convert to validated get. So now if this is valid, we will do 
uh, get controller and we want to set control rotation so this is valid we will do this and now i'll show you something so let's break the spin and we want to focus on the y value because the x and the z can go in as they are so for this let's get the hit actor let's do get actor location and let's also get the location of our player which is pretty so get actor location like so and then let's do from the top find look at rotation and the target of course being the hit actor so break the return value you can connect x as it is and z as it is so for the y value i'll show you what i mean we can adjust this a little bit to your preference for the moment i'll just plug it in and i'll show you how this would look like if we did nothing so i think this should be good to go so let's just give it a quick test and let's go to hit play and if i press f we can target lock and you see what i mean it's not looking too great so to change this let's go down and over here for the value y we can break this and we can do minus or if you want to call it subtract and let's subtract this by something like 25 and then this can go into here so we can lock but we can't disable it so all we have to do is over here we want to get our hit actor and sorry we want to set our hit actor to nothing again so like so and over here we can have a print string print string that says something on the lines of target lock off for example and over here we can say another print string calling it something like target locked so this is the performance friendly way so let's just see how this looks like and this will be of course determined by your frames so if i press f we are locked around uh, so we can move around and we are locked on the target and if i press f again i'm free to look around where i want so a better way or cost efficient way but it looks a little better let's break these pins and over here i can simply call uh, event tick and i could plug that into here and it will give us the same result except it will call it even if we are not target locked just because it's going to be checking so let's press f and we are of course target locked and with all this said thank you guys so much for watching if you liked the video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always happy developing